Hello! The Battle of the River Plate has happened. Yesterday, the thunder went down. Today, it's the day of reckoning. Because the Graf's Bay is now in Monte de Vera. Graf's Bay has reached safety, or it has reached its own trap. We'll be getting into that a bit today, we're talking about some of the diplomacy that starts going off. But these are the forces we've already been over that are in the South Atlantic. And now they know where the Graf's Bay is. They don't just have a rough idea, a rough idea. They know exactly where the Graf Spey is. This in modern terms is like a submarine sitting on the surface. Hello, you're dead. Your entire survival depends upon stealth, depends upon the enemy not knowing where you are. The moment you're found, the moment you're discovered, your career is over. Your lives are probably over. As this is the case of surface radar, she's over. She has two options. Two options. One, reality is internal. Two, is to fight it out. Leave the harbour. Now, if she could manage option two quick enough, i.e. before a great big strike carrier and battle cruiser get there before all the other heavy cruisers, that's Cumberland, Dorsetshire, Shropshire, all these big ships, before a half a flotilla of destroyers get there to reinforce the South American division sitting outside, she might have a chance of getting away. But the moment she's asking for more time, she's just giving the Royal Navy more time. All she does, time doesn't work for Graf Spey. Time doesn't work for Langsdorff. Time is going to kill them. And there is a reason for that. Because she's facing a far bigger, far better supported opponent who can use time to their advantage. When she was dancing all around to the Indian Ocean, South Atlantic and back again, doing all those sorts of things, she was keeping them off the, on the back foot. She kept changing the schedule. She kept using the distances to give her time, to give her space to act, to give her the position. But now the battle's happened. Now she's had the confrontation. Now she's in harbour. Now they know where she is. They don't only know where she is, they know she's not moving. She's in harbour. She's sat there. There is a very nice American providing pretty much a 24-7 commentary on what is going on. The Royal Navy knows she's there. Everything that can get there is coming to kill her. Arguably, 10 o'clock on the 14th of December is when her time to escape passes. Because there is now a fully built Type A, 8 inch Royal Navy, county class cruiser sitting. Not just any county cruiser, HMS Cumberland. The one which has danced and almost caught her on two separate occasions now is outside and is scenting blood. Other historians, other people might focus on the aircraft carrier, the battle cruiser are now, all these coming down south. But honestly, 17th, 18th, they're coming. It doesn't really matter. The damage Exeter had inflicted, the damage Achilles and Ajax had inflicted had all been enough to drive the Admiral Graf's Bay into port. If that's not to drive her into port, then an 8-inch cruiser, a full-sized one, 
which has plans on nothing but total annihilation. Under combined with two light cruisers who've already been thwarted in this once, and a Commodore who is very, very convinced that he can win, that is not a good scenario for the Admiral Graf Spade to get out to see it. Had a bad enough trouble once when it had room for manoeuvre, when it was able to dodge, when it had a whole Atlantic to hide in. When they didn't know where it was and didn't know it was coming. At this point, the grass face starts to move. They're going to hear it on the radio. They're going to get a live broadcast. They'll go to straight to action stations and they'll start coming in. The fight, Langsdorff knows this. He knows what the Royal Navy is like. He studied them. The Royal Navy will charge. They will go into up the Rio de la Plata to the river plate. They will be going into that area. They will go where they need to go to get that kill. And they'll send Millington Drake and the others to apologize afterwards. And remember, at this moment, Millington Drake is just about to change tack. First off, he started fighting for the grass bait to be kicked out. But once the Royal Navy tell him, no, give us time, we've got the killers coming, he won't get anywhere, keep him there. The British, the French shift to keeping them there. And by gun drop, they shift gears. There's a great line in the movie, this isn't a change of tack, it's a change of tactics. Tacitus, the Roman for whom tactics comes from, will be proud of such a line. Because it's true. When Milton Drake felt the best way to kill the Grass Bay was to kick it straight out into the waiting arms of the Royal Navy, he wanted to do that. When he learned that there was more coming, more coming. That's when he changed tactics. Because more coming made the death certain and made the likelihood of casualties on the British side le uh, lower. Because remember, to get rid of the Graf Spey, it might have taken Cumberland or Ajax or Achilles ramming her. Now, her commanding officers would have been willing to do that. It's not just the captain of Exeter who considered that. They would all have been willing to take the grass bay off the table. They would have been willing to ram her. But that would have lost a crew, another, a British cruiser, and that would have cost a lot of lives on both sides. A battle cruiser, an aircraft carrier, some destroyers, and a whole pair more of 18-inch heavy cruisers, though, joining an 18-inch heavy cruiser and two light cruisers, that suddenly would make things very certain. That would make the poor grass bay coming out going, hello. In the nicest way, it might not even go that way. Ark Royal, remember, is a strike carrier. She's the Royal Navy's methodology of taking out fleets in harbour. She's a direct product of a study for how to destroy fleets which are hiding in harbour. That's what the Royal Navy built Ark Royal for. That's what they were looking at when they were talking about designs for implacable and indefatigable. They were talking about strike carriers. Modern Queen of the class. Your name enemy is hiding as a fleeting being in harbour. How do you get to them and take them out? Well, Ark Royal is that job. The question of whether it would have been allowed to do that with the Admiral Graf's Bay sitting in Monte Vedo Harbour is a different matter. The law abiding part of me would like to say no, the Royal Navy would not have allowed its strike carrier to carry out a strike on an enemy ship in a neutral harbour. However, we are talking about a navy which, in a few months' time, would charge into a neutral nation's fjord inside it 
to rescue prisoners taken by this ship. We're talking about a navy which would annihilate its former allies when they had stopped fighting the war, simply because it couldn't stand the, for, uh, couldn't stand the risk of their fleet going over to the enemy. To start uh, the French Navy joining the Germans and start doing the, uh, following the orders of the Germans. They couldn't afford the risk, it was too dangerous. The Grass Bay was considered a great danger. So, I'm not sure. My hope would be no. My strong suspicion is if the Grass Bay had still been alive and in harbour on the 20th, maybe even on the 18th, she wouldn't have been alive for much longer. She would have been sunk. Remember, the Ark Royal and Renown arrive in Rio de Janeiro on the 17th. They sail on the 17th. They literally turn up, fuel, go. They are coming that fast at that speed. It's that urgent. If you're moving two prime capital assets that quickly, that fast towards a target, if you get there, are you likely to think, you know what, it's an information you can't do? Or are you likely to think, we'll do it? We're say, sorry to the Americans and the Uruguayans afterwards. I beg your forgiveness. Remember, Ark Royal had dive bombs aboard, so could have been a surgical strike. Anyway, I'm going to start talking about diplomacy over the next couple of days. Hope you enjoy it.